In this video we're going to look at the double distributive property where we multiply two binomials. This is page one, this is page two, and this is page uh, this is basically and just one example on page three. <clears throat> uh, this method is also called the FOIL method, but I guess I like to call it a double distributive property and I'll, I'll show you why. Um, so if we start off with multiplying 12 times 13, okay, multiply 12 times 13 the calculator or something see what you get okay and um, one way of doing it is of course 12 times 13 and you go the 3 times the 2 gives 6 the th this 3 times this 1 gives 3 then we put a 0 down here because we're multiplying by a 10 here see and we go this 1 this 10 times this 2 gives uh, 20 so let's see that's actually 20 and this 10 times this 10 gives 100 so we put one there right so that's one five six okay so that's one way of doing it that's just you know putting them one on top of the other we can also write them uh, side by side which is what uh, we'll be doing uh, in algebra mostly and so you know, basically, the point I'm trying to make with the with the long multiplication is that we went, you know, three times two, then three times ten, and then this time times this two, and then this ten times this ten. So, doing this double distributive property is actually the same thing. First of all, you take this ten and you multiply it by that ten and that three to get one hundred plus thirty. Okay. Then you take this 2 and multiply it by this 10 and this 3. And 2 times 10 gives me 20. 2 times 3 gives me 6. Okay. And at this point, I simply add like terms. And it should be obvious. So at this point, we simply add like terms. And you can see that you should know that, I mean, we add hundreds, we add tens, and then we add units. These are like terms. So. The only like terms we have here are the, are the tens uh, terms. The 20 and the 30 gives 50. So we have 100 plus 50 plus 6, which of course is 156. Same thing, right? Okay, and just like when we added here, obviously we added the 3 and the 2 to get 5. Okay, 30 and 20 to get 50. So with that example in mind, um, it should help us to understand this guy over here, x plus 2 times x plus 3. So over here we had 10 plus 2 times 10 plus 3. Now we have x plus 2 times x plus 3. And the double distributive property is done the same way. We simply take, start with this x, multiply him by this x, and we should know that x multiplied by x can also be written x squared. Then we go x multiplied by 3, gives me 3x. Then I take this 2 and I go 2 times x gives me 2x and 2 times 3 gives me 6. Then when I add like terms I have 1x squared term. I have 3x's and 2x's that makes 5x's and I have the number 6. So this is just like having 100 plus 50 plus 6 and in fact, it's exactly the same thing because we know 100 is 10 squared plus this is 5 times 10 plus 6. See that? 10 squared plus 5 times 10 plus 6. That's the same as x squared plus 5 times x plus 6, right? So if you want to press pause and try and do this one yourself, by all means, try that. Okay, now I'll do it. The double distributive property that we're looking at, we take simply take this x here, we multiply it by this one, and then by this one, and we get x squared plus 4x. Then we take this 8 here, and multiply him by this, and then by this. So we get plus 8x, plus 8 times 4, 32, and then we simply add like terms. x squared plus 12x plus 32. So, so the question is, why don't we use the FOIL method? Because a lot of you might have heard of the FOIL method. The FOIL method is when you have 8 x plus 8 uh, times x plus 4, we write down F-O-I-L, 
and we think I've got to multiply the first terms to begin with, that's x times x, so I put down x squared. Then I do my outside terms, x times uh, 4, these are on the outside, so that's 4x. Then I do 8 times x inside terms, and I write that down, and I should add them all up. And then I do the last terms, 8 times 4, to give me 32, and then I add like terms, and I get the same answer, okay? Now, the reason I don't do the FOIL method is because it doesn't work for x plus 8 times um, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. What's the first outside inside last now? FOIL method doesn't work, but the double distributive property always works. You simply take this term and you mul this and um, take the x, multiply it everywhere. Take an x squared of 4 minus 2x cubed, you know, plus 3x squared minus x. And then we take the 8 and multiply that in against everything as well to get um, plus 8x cubed minus 16x squared plus 24x minus 8. And then we add like terms, okay? So point about it is the double distributive property works for later math, whereas the FOIL method does not. So that's why I don't do the FOIL method. But it will give you the right answer on these simple binomials. So right now, of course, we're multiplying a binomial times another binomial. X minus 1 is a binomial because it has two numbers in it, X and negative 1. X plus 4 is also a binomial because it has X and 4 in it as well. Right? It has two numbers. Okay, so if I was multiplying this, again, take this x and multiply it in to both uh, terms in, in, in the this binomial and we simply go x times x of course is x squared x times 4 is 4x right then we take the negative 1 and distribute the negative 1 negative 1 times x is negative 1x and you can write them underneath each other if you like uh, negative 1 times 4 is minus 4 and then we simply add like terms and that should give us x squared and this is plus 3x minus 4 okay so um, press pause on the uh, video and see if you can do this one x minus 3 times x minus 5 Okay, now I'll try it. You simply take this x and multiply him in to both terms in this binomial to get x squared, and then x times negative 5 is minus 5x. And then we take this uh, negative 3 and multiply him in here and here. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 5 is plus 15. And then we simply add like terms and write down our answer, which will be x squared. Now, negative 5x minus 3x, in debt $5, take away $3. Now you're in debt by $8. We're subtracting here, not multiplying. And then it's plus 50, okay? Um, now, this one is an interesting one. x plus 2 times x minus 2. If I take this x and multiply it by this x, that gives me x squared. Then this x times negative 2 gives minus 2x. Then I take positive 2, multiply this in. 2 times x is plus 2x. 2 times negative 2, minus 4, right? Okay. When I add like terms here, what do I get? Add like terms and write down the next step. Well, I just have 1x squared term, but I have a negative 2x and then plus 2x. That gives me 0x, doesn't it? x squared plus 0x minus 4. But 0x, of course, is what? Just like 0 apples is 0, 0 cherries is 0, 0x, of course, is just nothing. It's 0. So 0x is 0, and so this thing can just be written x squared minus 4, can't it? So the whole x plus 2 times x minus 2 ended up being x squared minus 4, and that's an important observation. So... Press pause on your video and multiply this out, x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now I'll do it. I take this x, multiply it by this x, and I get x squared. 
then this x times 1 gives me plus 1x. Then negative 1 times x is minus 1x. Negative 1 times 1 is minus 1. Then when I add like terms, I have x squared, and now plus 1x minus 1x. 1 minus 1 is 0, so that's x squared plus 0x minus 1. And 0x, of course, is 0, so the final answer is x squared minus 1. Okay? And just what we need to notice about um, these things is there are patterns here. When I take an x plus 2 and an x minus 2, I get x squared minus 4. Okay? When I take an x minus 1 times an x plus 1, I get an x squared minus 1. So we need to identify the patterns. Basically, if these two numbers are the same, and one of them's a plus, one of them's, and the signs, one of the signs is plus and one is negative, then you're going to get x squared minus something as your answer. Okay, so if, if these, if you have an, if you, you know, these are, there's an x here and here, there's a one here and here, the signs are different, you're going to get x squared minus this number squared, one squared. So this is actually, as you can see, this is x squared minus two squared, okay? It's called a difference of squares, because two squared is four, and this is in fact x squared minus one squared, because one squared is one. So this is a difference of squares, and this is also a difference of squares, okay? Um, the other pattern we need to notice is when we did x plus 2 times x plus 3, okay, 2 and 3 add to 5, they multiply to 6. See that? Add, take, add 4 and 8 together. 4 and 8 added together gives us 12, right? What's 4 multiplied by 8? 32. 4 and negative 1 added together gives us, add negative 1 and 4 together in your head and you get positive 3. Multiply 4 and negative 1 and you get negative 4, right? So the pattern continues. If you add negative 3 and negative 5 together, 3 bad guys and 5 bad guys gives us 8 bad guys. But when we multiply these numbers together, we get 15, right? And and the, that's the same thing. If you add 2 and negative 2 together, you get 0, 0x. Zero and if you multiply them, negative 4. And so the pattern continues, okay? So we just need to identify that pattern when we're multiplying these out because it's going to be useful because uh, in the next section, we're, uh, in the next set of problems, we're going to have to start here and then go backwards. So we need to understand what's going on, okay? So if I do, let, let me do this example now. A plus B times A plus B. Take A, multiply it by A, and I get A squared. Then multiply it by this B, and I get plus AB, okay? Then take this positive B, multiply it by A, and I get plus um, BA, let's say. And then B times B gives me B squared. Okay, so we need to understand that A times B and B times A is the same number, it's the same thing. If you had 3 times 4, what's that? 12. Isn't that the same thing as 4 times 3? Right? 3 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 3. Now, A and B are just numbers. So, A times B is the same thing as B times A. And in fact, A times, you know, this AB can be brought down. Now, this B times A can also be written AB, okay? So what I can write is I have a squared plus a b plus a b plus b squared. Okay. Now these terms are alike. A b and a b they're alike. So I have one a b, one a b plus one a b, and that makes two a b. So my final answer is a squared plus two a b plus b squared. Right. What if we had a plus b times a minus b? Press pause and multiply this out and see what you get. You take this a and multiply it in. a times a is a squared. a times negative b is minus a b, right? Then we take positive b and multiply it in. b times a is b a. And b times b, b times negative b is minus b squared. So then when I add like terms, this a squared comes down, 
And of course, you can write rewrite. I guess this is this is minus a b, and then b a is the same as plus a b. Okay, minus b squared. Now, a b, the, we have like terms here: negative a b and plus a b. This is negative one a b plus one a b. So we have basically a squared plus zero a b is minus b squared, or a squared minus b squared if you like, right? So just for practice, why don't you try this one? x plus y times x plus y. Okay, now I'll try it. We take this x, multiply it by this x, and then by this y. x times x is x squared. x times y, x, y. Now what? Take this y and multiply this y in here and here. y times x is yx, or it can also be written xy. y times y is y squared. So I have x squared. Now this is 1xy and 1xy, and they add to give me 2xy plus y squared. So this should be the answer, right?